Welcome to part two of our tuning series. Um, we're still at the desk today. Uh, I'm gonna be going through the screens now of actual configuration. And as I said before, this is um, coming at you from a Miata perspective, but if you have a different kind of vehicle, all the same stuff basically applies. It's just some of the details and numbers that I'm putting in may be different for your vehicle. So you may need to do a little bit of extra research, but the whole process is the same. So we've covered kind of the overview of what's going on with the process. And the next thing you want to do before you actually start, you know, getting into configuring these screens and trying them out in the vehicle is you want to make sure that you have your idle valve control configured correctly. And there's two things that need to happen. So number one is get the type correct in your vehicle. Um, maybe a PWM, which stands for pulse width modulation style or a stepper valve style um, or you may just have you know kind of an on off valve where it's just open or closed so you're going to have to figure out which one that is for Miata's it's a PWM and what this means is that for a particular the way this is controlled is that for a particular amount of opening that you want it's sending a frequency and it's sending that frequency in a duty cycle which means in effect on or off you're sending the frequency not sending the frequency and so on and so that at that percentage of how much you're sending it per second, you know, basically across this frequency that controls how the valve opens. So in idle control, that's where that's set up. And as I mentioned before, we're going to just go to, straight to closed loop. And we're going to leave our crank to run taper time as three. You can configure this on another screen as well, but um, three is a good place to start. And basically it means you don't want to go into um, idle control too quickly after crank. You want it to basically be trying to, you know, give a little extra, which is usually how cranking is configured, uh, for just a second or two, you know, um, afterwards. So you don't, you don't want to put this to less than one and you don't want it to go more than about five seconds. So three is good. So we're going to come over here to idle settings again and down to closed loop idle settings. And this screen brings up a lot of stuff, but for now, what we're going to focus on is over here, idle valve minimum duty percentage and maximum duty percentage. And so these numbers are what we talked about as being critical to, you know, the Megasquirt being able to know what's op what's closed, the top one, and what's fully open. And so to arrive at these numbers, we have a handy little me method over here under test modes. So we can pull this down and there's a lot of different test modes, which we're going to be talking about these um, in future videos because they're super handy, but we're going to come all the way down to idle valve. And we're going to bring up this, uh, this output test mode screen. And what it's going to do is it's going to, um, when your mega score is connected and your laptop is connected, you've got this open and running, you can enable test run position. And what it's going to do is it's going to override everything in the background and give your idle valve this duty cycle, whatever you type in here. So the way you can do this, if you completely have no idea what is open and what's closed, is you would just start at zero and work your way up. And it's going to, in real time, um, adjust the valve. And so as soon as your um, valve starts causing RPMs to increase, meaning it's starting to open. And say in my car, it gets to do, it starts that at about 26. So in Miata's it's around 30 uh, to open. So somewhere it might be 25, it might be 26, you know, so on. So in your car, you can just see where it is. It'll start to open and you can keep clicking until the RPMs uh, stop rising. Once they stop rising, which is gonna be probably between 60 and 70 on a Miata, it, you know that that's the top um, fully open position. So you're going to take those two numbers and you're going to put it into the closed loop idle settings right here. Now, the other thing I would mention for the IAC and stuff is you may be tempted to mechanically change your idle um, using the, the physical air screw that's on the thing. I would recommend against this. If your car was working fine with the stock ECU, then the problem is with your tune and with the 
on the Megascore side. It's with it's with how you've got it set up. It has nothing to do mechanically. So if your if your OEM ECU is controlling idle just fine, then the Megasquirt needs to do, be able to do the same thing. Do not throw yourself into a tailspin by starting to change mechanical things on the car. Um, so uh, that's why I even recommend don't change the, when you're setting timing for the first time, it, you don't even bother setting it mechanically, set it using the offset trigger on the, on the Megasquirt. Um, that keeps everything in sync and gets you to a known spot and you're not, you know, you're not changing things away too much from like a known position. All right, so now we are going to actually start getting into these screens. And the first thing that's gonna happen is the priming pulse. And a lot of these screens can be kind of either, you can leave it as a default that was on the base map or you kind of tweak it one time and then that's it, you're done. And it, you don't really have to go back to that. So the priming pulse is just a little bit of extra uh, fuel that's being used to clear out, in effect, air in the lines potentially, air in the injectors, and to wet down the walls of the um, uh, the cylinder, um, you know, just before the car starts. So this is the pulse width, and it's in milliseconds. So when it's really cold, you might get six millisecond squirt down to two millisecond squirt. So this is not to be confused with the fuel pump prime, which you hear when you turn the car to the on position or the accessory on position and you hear that little kind of you should hear a little flow or buzz or something like that from your fuel pump um, and that just primes everything gets pressure in the lines and then this is what's used to actually squirt a little bit of fuel into the cylinder so the next step is to get into cranking and there there are really um, three screens that involve cranking. So let's look at that, the first one. Okay, so the first one is the cranking RPM. And so this number should be a little bit higher. They say a few hundred, but that's for kind of an old school car. Um, a, really a hundred or so more than your cranking speed, which is probably about 200 in a Miata, it's fine. So 150 above that, 350 is your cranking RPM. That's basically when it thinks that it's starting to run. You can make this 400 or something like that. This is just the default, I think, that was in this map 350, and it's fine. Flood clear is if you've got the throttle pressed down all the way past 70%, it's not going to inject any fuel whatsoever. So it's it's going to allow you to clear extra fuel that's already potentially in the cylinder because uh, maybe you messed up in terms of the fueling um, table and uh, you, you just flooded it, you know? <laughs> so this allows you to recover from that. You could increase this maybe to 80 so that, you know, you can, when you're first starting out, if you need to give yourself a little throttle to get it to catch from cranking, then that's what we're gonna tune here in the next couple of screens. Now, the other thing is um, you can turn off, on and off the cranking taper curve. And so that's gonna be based on um, your, you know, how, how warmed up um, it is. And um, if you wanna turn on batch fire during crank, that's not really necessary. If you have um, a sequential injection, it's, it's fine. You can leave this like that. And coming down here, it also tells you how many uh, cycles to um, that the, this is, this is where actually, this is the unit for the, after start enrichment. And so cycles allows you to um, uh, specify it in terms of engine events versus seconds. So whichever one is more convenient. I kind of think of after start enrichment and cycles a little bit more myself, but uh, you can choose either one. All right. So the next thing is the uh, cranking pulse. And that's that taper you could turn on and off and what this does is it gives um, a little bit of extra fuel, uh, basically um, based on the, um, the coolant level. So if it's colder, more fuel. Once it's gotten to warm, it's basically at 100%, which means normal amount of fuel that's specified in the, in the fueling table. So this is a percentage. So 101% is just a little bit more fuel. All right, then for whatever reason, 
um, you have to skip on down to idle cranking duty steps. And so this is a key table um, for getting your car started quickly and smoothly. If you are having to give, give apply a little throttle to get the car to start and sort of stay started, then this is um, the table that needs to be modified. Uh, so if it kind of starts, begins to start and catch, and then it sort of stumbles immediately, then that may mean your uh, IAC valve is not open enough. And so what this does is it tells it what uh, duty, duty cycle percentage it needs to be on. So as we saw before, 26 or so uh, was closed and 70, 60 to 70 is, is um, you know, fully open. So here we've got it open a bit kind of at the 50% range. So what you want to do is, this is the equivalent of you adding throttle. So you want to increase this step by step until you no longer have to touch the throttle at all yourself, that it starts up smoothly, and um, but not so high that the RPMs immediately you know, jump up to like 2,000 or 2,500 or something like that. An initial start RPM for the first few seconds, and this is what stock does, is it'll sit between probably 1200 to 1500. 1500 if it's kind of cold outside, 1200 somewhere, you know, if it's like kind of a, you know, warmer temperature outside. Okay. So depending on the coolant temperatures uh, and whatnot, this is this is the percentage of how open your valve is. So in effect, this is how much throttle it's giving. So once we have the cranking um, working and that it cranks and it catches more or less immediately, that it's not cranking for a long time, um, it looks like it's getting enough air, it's, it's getting enough fuel, then it's gonna go into the after start enrichment phase. And so this is an adder, percentage adder of fuel that you wanna give it for the brief amount of time that it's in after start enrichment. I'm, and I mentioned that it's in engine cycles. So like I said, it's very quick. So when the car is like, say it's the summer and it's like somewhere around ambient is 70 to 90. So it's gonna give it about 39, 37% extra fuel when it starts. And if you've been out and about, you know, and, and the car is warm, then it's gonna add about 25% extra fuel. So, um, you know, this, this might be, this is the defaults right here. So we're going to play with this. This might be a little rich to start off with, but it's better to start off a little rich and work our way down to a little bit more efficient, um, than it is to go the other direction, because that way, you know, you, you see that it starts and, and it's going to run like this. If it doesn't run like this, then there's, there's probably an issue. And by issue, I mean it, you know, your timing may be off or, or something like that. All right, so the taper, which probably should have come first actually, is showing the amount of number of engine cycles or second, 0.1 seconds that it's the, the units, whatever units you set on one of the previous screens, that's what this is. So when it's warmed up, it's only gonna be 150 engine cycles, which you can calculate you know, based on the RPM and, and, and so on. So it's quick, um, no matter what, it's quick. All right, so we've cranked, the engine's caught. We're giving it a little bit of fuel so that the RPMs go up and it's a, it's a nice solid start. Um, now, we want that extra, uh, those extra RPMs to last for a little while so that we don't have, you know, stumbling right after the start. So after it's it's turned over, you know, several times, and you know we've got that little extra bump. We also want to control how long an extra bump is going to last for. So this warm up enrichment starts immediately after crank. So again, keep in mind that these numbers, this percentage add is going to be, uh, you know, in addition to the after start enrichment as well. So you're getting even more fuel. You know, so yeah, those two things kind of go together for for those brief seconds that the after start enrichment is occurring. Um, and so 
100% means it's just the normal amount of fuel. So it says you need to have 100% in the final row. And as your engine warms up, it needs less and less additional stuff to keep it to keep it going. So you can kind of play with this taper and we'll get into how you can actually see what's a good amount of fuel um, by setting up a dashboard specifically for idling. And I'm going to show you how that works. And you can take this chart, put it on that dashboard and actually make physically make changes as it goes through these temperatures as you watch it warm up. So you're going to start around here and we're going to watch it change. Um, and we're going to be looking at our AFR gauge output. And if it's too lean, we're going to add fuel as it warms up. So it's going to be sitting here. Oh, it's too lean. We're going to up this to 120 or something like that. If it gets here, uh, it's still too lean, 115, you know, or something like that. If it gets here and it's, and it's too rich, we might, 140 or something, we might just put it to 100 and be done with it. You know, the, no extra fueling. If it's still too rich, then that means our, our VE table is, is wrong and that maybe needs to be reduced a little bit. Um, but we're going to show a demo of that later. Okay. So now we've got, we've gone through the warm up, and unfortunately that's something you can only do like maybe a couple times a day. You know, you have to get start from a cold engine to really be able to tune that all the way. But idle tuning is something that you can do, you know, kind of forever. You can sit in your driveway for an, an hour and you know, you can, you can play with, play with this. So we saw the idle control, we're in closed looped, um, and the rest of this is set up correctly. All right, so let's go down to closed loop idle settings. Okay, so um, these basic settings are a really good place to start. And um, we're gonna get into kind of how you can change the PID um, you know settings but um, the main thing here is this basically adjusts like how how aggressively it tries to reach your your target AFR so if your target AFR is 14.7 then changing um, some some of these values on this screen as well as the other screen um, are uh, gives you ability to define how sensitive that is or how aggressive that is so if you look at some of these things um, by in milliseconds, this is how quickly the control runs. So these defaults are good. 100 milliseconds, a tenth of a second, you know, is, is a good, good amount of time. Um, this uh, setting is basically says RM, RPM dot is the rate of change of your RPM. So, um, as it says, use of that engaging the clutch without throttle does not leave pit running. So you don't want it to be running while it's not actually idling. Um, and you need a certain amount of time before it's going to enter the pit, you know, control again. And then most importantly, you're setting what are your min and max values so that it knows what closed is and open is. All right, so this box is basically about when idle control is going to activate, and so um, you can uh, use. Um, we're going to leave this at standard, and we're going to. Um, this basically says that we don't want idle to activate if our foot is on the throttle, basically at all. So at point eight uh, percent, and it's not zero because. You, you may have seen from previous videos that the the throttle may kind of bounce a little bit and it's not quite at zero even though your foot's completely off of it so leaving it at point eight makes it so that it's uh you know it basically will start um the rpm is not changing too dramatically you don't want control it trying to adjust a whole bunch of crap when the when the um the rpm is still changing and you don't want it to be trying to do it when um 
the decel when you're decelerating um, aggressively. Coming over here, we talked about this. The adder is just the percentage that um, gives the idle control valve a little bit more when you lift. And so it means that it won't like, the RPMs won't drop precipitously when you lift on the throttle. You don't want it to drop to like 600 RPM or something like that. So this gives it a little bit more. The RPMs stay above target and then it'll drop to target. That's what you want. This one, um, may be set to use last value by default i'm not quite sure but you want it to do use initial value table and i'm going to show you that next how to configure the initial value table um, in the table lookup you can use it based on coolant or the air um, this is mass air temperature so i like to use air and the, once you've changed that the rest of these should be okay for now So now we want to go down to the uh, initial values table. And um, what this represents is the idle valve uh, duty cycles that we want to um, have for a particular target RPM. So if it's targeting you know, 1100 because we're uh, at, um, you know, it's colder outside or something like that, or if there's load on the engine like the AC is on, then um, we want the idle valve to be open a little bit more versus if we're targeting lower value, then we want the idle to supply less air. So we make that a little bit lower. So it's close to closed here. And so the way to come up with these things is to just sort of look at, um, you know, as you blip the throttle in idle, you can look at, at um, you know, or not really blip the throttle, but once you're looking at the RPMs and um, um, your current idle valve open or closed, you can get a feeling for uh, how you need to adjust these things. So if your RPM is a little bit too low, then what this does is it allows it to um, immediately jump to a particular valve setting it gives it like a heads up it's like a hint you know saying okay once you start your um, idle closed loop idle control jump to this because you're at 900 rpm and that's going to give you uh, a nice hint of where to be and so it'll it'll reach your target idle um, that much quick more quickly so by tweaking these settings that allows it to smoothly enter idle control and reach your settings, you know, your target settings as far as RPM as well as AFR. All right, so the next thing is you want to con control what, what are those targets. So your um, target curve here is based on kind of how cold things are, what your coolant level is. And so when it's really cold, you will want to target probably as high as, you know, 1400 or thereabouts RPM cruising down to a nice 850. So once everything's warmed up, 850 is generally a nice target RPM for uh, a Miata. So, um, you, you know, your mileage may vary. You want it to, you may want it to idle, um, a little higher you know it kind of depends a little bit where you are you know if you're at a high altitude low altitude you know so some of these things can change a little bit but that's typically the range i like to use so now we just got a couple more screens i'm going to hit this one real quick um this is the uh voltage compensation for your idle valve and basically if the if your voltage is kind of varying then it can lower it or you know or raise um, the duty cycle to compensate for that. Normally that shouldn't be a problem, so we can just leave this. And then next we have the air conditioning idle up. And I recommend you can mess with this after you've got your basic um, idle tune set up. Um, and this just means, does your idle tune perform correctly when additional load is being placed uh, you know, on the engine? So with, if you set up your harness in the way that uh, I've gone through in my videos, then you've got uh, an idle input on the data log in, and you've got the output, which goes to your AC compressor, if you have AC, 
to uh, injector H because we don't have that many injectors in a Miata. So we've got those set up and that should be the default here. And basically this controls how much extra um, RPM you want to um, go up when there's additional load. Next we have the idle advanced settings. And what I recommend to start off with until you've had a chance to play with some of these things is um, you might actually want to turn both of these off, but idle advance on what it what it does is it uh, forces a, a specific timing advance based on the load. And so it makes it not, you know, it's it's sort of like fixed. And um, um, so I usually leave that off and then the second one is the idle RPM timing correction and we're going to get to there's another screen which has that table but what this does is that it gives an advance help uh, helper to correct RPM if it like drops or goes too high it'll change the advanced to um, to change that as opposed to just controlling it with the idle air control valve so this can be helpful so you can either leave this off to begin with while you're initial is you know starting your tuning so that there's not too many variables to play with, uh, but leaving it on is also not that is not that big a deal. So the correction curve is right here, and if yours is not showing that little table, I kind of like to look at the table honestly. So if you look at this, if the RPMs have dropped, like you go into idle and it's dropped. Um, too far, like minus 400, then it's going to advance the timing by four. And then as you can see, it kind of cruises through the zero mark, zero and zero. And then if, if the RPMs are too high and it's revving up, it'll drop the timing to adjust for that. So like I said, you can leave this off if you're still kind of messing with your um, IAC duty cycles and you haven't quite got that dialed in just so that you've got you know at a basic number and then what this does is it helps during strange other circumstances like when you're not really strange but when you're driving as opposed to just sitting in your driveway you know and and it's entering idle from you know you moving and so there's different levels of load and you're in from you're entering idle from one gear or another gear you know and cruising to you know down to a stop you know that that type of thing so this can address some of those issues while maintaining, you know, kind of some stability as far as your idle air and, you know, other thing and your fueling. Then the last thing is the idle VE table. And so when closed loop is on and idle VE is on, you can turn this on and off. Um, this is convenient because it puts in one place the um, fuel values that you're going to be using while in idle. So when idle control is happening, these are what's going to be used, not your main uh, fuel table right here. So instead of using whatever values, so this can be a little confusing. If it's on on the other screen, then these values are not being used. It's these values. So, but I kind of recommend this because it puts it all in one place and it, it allows you to see how the idle is doing and you can make these changes kind of in, in one spot as opposed to having your, your main um, fueling table. So we're going to set this to use uh, PID idle acti activation. And that covers uh, all the screens. And so um, what we're going to do in the next one is actually show you how to set up the uh, dashboard that you can use to help with your tuning so that you're not kind of getting frustrated clicking between all these different screens. You can put everything you need on one screen and actually make changes in real time. And that's going to save you just hours of frustration and days of work because, you know, as I said before, you do not have um, that many chances per day to work from a cold engine. So, you know, if it's over the weekend or something, you're not working, then, you know, you can do it a couple, three times a day, something like that to try different tunings. Otherwise, it's going to take you, you know, a week or two because you only get one chance a day to, to try to tweak things. So this can help you reduce that amount of time. All right. Well, thanks for watching. And the next one is coming very shortly. 
So if you like this information and content and want to see more, uh, please subscribe, please like the video and share it to all your tuning buddies. And I will see you on the next one.